Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access Trader.com. Uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody is happy and healthy and enjoying uh, your lives, your family, uh, and all that good stuff. If you are a brand new trader and you're, you're, you're in it for the first year or so, two years, three years, it's going to be bumpy. Okay, It's always going to be darker before the light, but just always remember everybody develops in their own pace. Uh, some people hit the ground running the first couple of years and some people might take five, ten years uh, to figure it out. So don't get discouraged if this is something that you want to do uh, in any type of capacity, whether it's part-time, full-time, uh, or anything in between. Just again, just remember everybody is built completely different. Everybody's a different account size. Uh, everybody has a different way of living their lives and the mental makeup. And eventually, uh, you're buying enough time, right? You're buying enough time, it will uh, eventually click. So, you know, be, um, you know, be be thankful for what you have, not what you want. Stay the course, and in time, everything uh, will work out. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for tuning in, for finding us. Uh, if you can just take one second, uh, click a like, share, subscribe to the channel, I would really uh, appreciate it. Uh, and for the rest of you guys who've been with me for a long, long time, well, hello. Hello, I hope everybody's having uh, a great weekend. So this is gonna be pretty much one of the more you know, cut and dry videos um, I've recorded in a long time since here, <laughs> right? Since uh, since two weeks ago. And the reason why I'm saying that, obviously I'm saying that in tongue in cheek, two weeks ago, we had a really big line in the sand um, below this 435 level, which at that time was the 50 day moving average. If you're a brand new trader, again, just write this down. This is the most basic essence of technical analysis. Above the 50 day moving average, is bullish. That's called a risk on. You can swing trades, uh, you can swing positions, whatever the case may be, as long as they're above the 50 day as well. And if it's below the 50 day moving average, it's bearish. It's something I've been saying for years and years and years. The most, it, it's the prototype for understanding uh, market sentiment. So we lost uh, the 435 level on uh, 415, April 15 tax day, right? How appropriate is that? And from there, we went from 435 all the way down to 413. And if you've been, you know, watching the broadcast, you kind of know well, I'm going to sell cycle, you know, really, really quickly below the 50-day moving average. But since then, the bulls have done a great job. Uh, earnings came out. A lot of names uh, came out with earnings. Um, most of them, the price action corresponded uh, to the upside. Um, even names like, you know, even names like Snapchat and Tesla that. You know, again, did not have great quarters, uh, but they were so built in for the downside move that the market, you know, the market kind of shunned it to the side. And that's a good, good thing. Uh, since then, you had uh, Google come out with earnings, Microsoft come out with earnings, uh, Qualcomm come out with earnings, Apple uh, was this week, uh, AMD. Uh, the only one that's not left, the, the only one that's left that hasn't come out with uh, earnings yet is NVIDIA. Uh, and everybody's obviously uh, anticipating that. I, I believe they report in a couple of weeks. It, you know, uh, if, you, if you can check the earnings there, I didn't check exactly what it is. But I, I think this is the last of the quote unquote uh, Magnificent Seven or the beta names uh, that I trade that haven't come out with earnings. If you look at uh, this week, um, Apple, again, great quarter, right? Absolutely great quarter. Um, the whole fear was China. Was the China Chinese iPhone sales going to be uh, just absolutely miserable, and they were. They actually surprised the street. Uh, Amazon this week posted uh, a really nice quarter, a uh, really nice quarter. Indeed, they did not issue a dividend, but uh, again, really nice quarter as well. Uh, Qualcomm did very, very, very well this quarter. Uh, names that didn't this week, uh, SMCI, uh, honestly, you know, had such a huge run uh, over the year. I mean, I mean, listen, if you talk, ask them, a shareholder, Two years ago, if they would be disappointed with a seven hundred and eighty dollars close, they probably would tell you no. But you know, it's been been kind of taking profits in the last uh, several months here. Obviously, 
uh, well below the 50-day moving average. But the moral of the story is the bulls are marching off the bot, right? And that's the key. And here we are, right? Here we are. And this is kind of what we talk about going into this week. It's a very cut and dry thing, okay? You don't need to uh, have a whole conversation or debate uh, with somebody on social media about it. Guys, write down this level. The 50-day moving average is 436.50, right? That's what it is right now. That was also the high from Friday's session. As you can see, Friday, we had this big, big run, and we hit the 50-day, and we got rejected. The only good thing is for the Bulls, they didn't get rejected all the way back down to red. They actually held their games. You know, monster, monster week uh, for the Bulls to the upside. And now all they need to do, all they need to do, again, this is not really a, a, a you know a, a debatable topic here. All they got to do is reclaim this 436.50 on the close. If we can reclaim 436.50 on the close, all this goes away, guys. Literally, all this goes away and you don't have to start, you know, you don't have to start uh, going into your bunker with uh, canned food, you know, canned goods, screaming the world's going to end. Again, the bulls will be saved uh, if we can reclaim and stay above the 50-day moving average. Uh, and this is where uh, it's going to be very, very interesting to see uh, what happens this week. When you look at the overall uh, spectrum of names, you, you kind of have to like uh, what you're seeing here. Let's go kind of go through some names uh, for this week. Again, I, I want to keep this very, very cut and dry uh, update and just kind of go through some names that I think are are vulnerable one way or another to kind of, um, you know, to getting their next move. So let's start off with Tesla. Okay, so here's here's how you can interpret the stock, right? The stock has been absolutely in death mode uh, since it lost its 50-day moving average in January, right? As you could get, here's another example below the 50-day bearish, right? So we had this massive, massive move down all the way down to 138.80. They came out with earnings, um, worst quarter in 12 years. But again, the fact that they were down 40% a year, the market, you know, digested it, right? Digested and pushed it forward. And had a great, great several day run reclaiming back the 50 day moving average. Right? You see this light blue line? So over it. Here's the problem with Tesla. I, I and this is a question I posed, I think two, three videos ago. The qu my question was: Can they finally stay above the 50 day and build on their price per share, or institutional money flow people going to turn around and say, oh, "Wait a minute, I get the run. I get the fact that the stock um, had um, you know kind of discounted quarter." But again, this is the worst quarter in 12 years, right? As you can see here, ever since it had that last big move into this 199 area, it's been all lower highs uh, for the last one, two, three, four, five days, right? A whole week of lower highs. And now the question is of Tesla is, well, is the stock actually going to hold on to the 50-day moving average? That's the big question, um, at least I'm watching for, for, uh, for next week. Uh, obviously, there's a channel here. There's a three-day channel that if Tesla can actually wake up can get above, maybe it starts moving higher, but then I'm watching the 50-day moving average as well. Now, what happens if Tesla loses the 50-day? Again, the same way that it lost the 50-day here on January the 9th that started a massive sell cycle. Well, if it happens again, if we close below the 50-day moving average again, yeah, the stock was going to go right back to it lows this, you know, despite how nice of a move it had uh, coming, into, uh, coming into this quarter. So, you know, it's a very interesting week. Uh, you know, again, I'm pulling for Tesla because, again, once everything's over the 50-day, I want to be long stuff. My, you know, my game especially is overnight momentum, you know, and stocks are strong, closing strong above their range. So I, I'd rather would be always long Tesla than short Tesla. But again, if you guys have been watching this for a long time, I really don't have a preference one way or another. I'd rather be long Tesla. But again, if it starts losing the 50-day moving average, Darth Vader will come out and he'll come out with extreme prejudice. Um, but yeah, I will be watching this channel here this three-day channel here to see if it could kind of wake up. But the one thing is the last uh, couple of days, it got upgraded. I forgot by who, $230 price target, and they sold it in, and they sold the upgrade. So I, I definitely want to keep an eye for Tesla for this week. Guys, look at PLTR, right? So PLTR, uh, again, one of these AI companies um, also, again, here's a perfect example, right? When it reclaimed the 50-day moving average, this just kind of goes on the whole on the whole nuance, how important the 50 day is going into today, uh, going into Monday with the, with the cues. But you can see here, once PLTR got above the 50 day and granted they had good earnings as well, it started a really, really nice up cycle. When they finally lost the 50 day, guess what happened? It started a really bad cycle. So here we are, right? We are closed. We closed right at the 50 day moving average on PLTR. 
guys, watch this thing. If they could confirm PLTR coming in for tomorrow for Monday session, we can start seeing a base here. Uh, I did see, I believe it was June 26 and a half calls, 26 and 26 and a half calls, uh, pretty much all of this week. So definitely keep an eye on PLTR again, another name close to getting uh, above the 50 day moving average. Look at Shopify, right? Look at Shopify again, same uh, same thing, right? Same thing below the 50 day, right? The stock started selling above the 50 day. It got back above, then it lost the 50 day, started selling again. So Shopify is at the 50 day moving average as well. Watch this as well going into this week. If Shopify can get back above the 50 day and confirm Friday's price channel, maybe it starts the next leg up. Looks really, really good here as well. Uh, Google, you know, Google did come out with good earnings a couple of, uh, what, about a week ago. And then profit taking came into with the market. Again, the market got sold uh, in certain nuances pretty aggressively, but the stock held up fairly well. There's, there's a four day channel that's developing here, right? One, two, three, four. Monday will be day five. Keep an eye on Google. If they can get back above the April 30th range, right? If they could get them back above the thir April 30th range, maybe it starts grinding back up uh, to its earnings highs. Uh, look at Coinbase. Uh, I know, you know, I know uh, uh, Bitcoin has been all over the place, above 60,000, below 6,000. I'm not really a Bitcoin guy. But again, I do know the same similarities on every single chart, every single scenario. And Coin has exactly the same scenario as the 50 day as the other memes um, I just talked about. So they came out with earnings, pretty good numbers, uh, didn't really, uh, really didn't react to earnings. But here's what we do know, right? Here's what we really do know. It's been basing now the last two days up below the 50 day moving average. Watch this coin. If it could somehow get back above the 50 day moving average, then it could start testing those recent highs of 239 on April the 24th. However, there's a flip side in that as well. If it, the longer it stays below the 50 day moving average, if it confirms the lows from Thursday, then yes, there's a shot it goes back below uh, 200 bucks. So again, it's a name that we want to watch on both uh, sides. Uh, NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA has been an absolute monster, an absolute monster. It doesn't make a difference uh, which way we've been looking at this thing. It lost a major range here. It lost the 50. You guys remember that 50-day moving average? The, uh, the video I recorded, if NVIDIA loses the 50-day, what happened? Well, this is what happened. So NVIDIA got back above the 50-day moving average, and now it's close to getting above this whole macro channel that started on April 17th. If we could get back above this macro channel, above the April 17 highs, then we can go to 907. 907 was rejected several times. It got rejected on April the 4th. It got rejected on uh, April the 11th. So if we can start building above this little baby channel here that started on 417, then it could test this 907 level. And if it gets above 907, we can start seeing the 920 uh, 922 channel going all the way back to April 1st. So it's a very, very uh, big area there as well. Other than that, you know, you have names, uh, you know, not doing as great. Uh, AMD, again, still, you know, can't find itself. It really can't. It kind of lost its footing. It was such a hot stock here. The majority of 2023, it's been well under the 50-day moving average for a while. Again, if you're looking for semis to trade, Look for the ones above the 50 day, right? The Qualcomms that had a great uh, quarter. Uh, NVIDIA, that's obviously just, again, it looks like they want to run this thing uh, ahead of earnings as well. So look for names above the 50 in the same group, not below the 50. You don't want to play, um, you don't want to play catch up. You don't want to be in the business of playing uh, with the redheaded stepchild. No offense to the redheaded stepchildren out there. Uh, but you want to go with always uh, the leaders of the group. Obviously, SMCI would fall into the same uh, category is AMD. Again, SMCI was hot last year, right? It's not hot anymore. It's still below the channels here. So stick with NVIDIA, stick with the Qualcomms of the world. Those are the ones uh, you definitely want to uh, be a part of. Uh, Amazon, again, great quarter. Uh, we are very close to uh, the April 11th highs of that four, roughly around that 190 level. Nice coal buying coming in all week for short-term expiration. 190s, we saw some 200s as well. So again, the stock continues uh, to do very well. And Carvana, boy, oh boy, did they surprise, right? This is a stock, I believe, that well north of, I think, 40% uh, short interest. They actually turned a profit. Look at the move 
uh, Carvana's put in the last couple of days. Obviously, needs to go sideways a little bit uh, for the next week or so. But the longer the sellers are comfortable at this level, if there's another leg up this week or next, it could be very, very aggressive just because the sellers uh, are comfortable uh, at these levels. So that's it, guys. That's it. Uh, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Uh, again, this is all we need to know, folks. All we need to know is if we can get above 436.50 on the close, on the queues, risk becomes on, and anything above the 50-day moving average is a green light. Guys, have a great weekend, everybody. Stay blessed, everybody. Stay healthy. And with God's help, I will see you all on Monday. Take care.